Today I'm going to show you the difference between density and flow inside a Lightroom. What's up nerds? Hope you had a fantastic weekend. Today is Monday and Monday means it's poll day. And this is a really easy one. Do you like coffee or tea? I know some of you might not like either. I'm pretty close to that boat. I prefer tea way over coffee but I rarely drink tea either, so I know, call me weird, but what do you like? I'd love to know. Okay, density and flow. I've been getting this question quite a bit, and part of it is my fault, because I've shown you guys a lot of uh, tricks as it relates to the adjustment brush, the radial filter, the graduated filter, and all of those options offer a brush feature, and whenever there's a brush feature, there's a density and there's a flow feature and so a lot of you are confused as to what the hell is the difference between density and flow it's really easy once you see it so i'm going to jump into lightroom and show you the difference between the two so in order to get to density and flow you need to activate one of these tools i'm going to start with the adjustment brush first because when i click on the adjustment brush the density and flow is right here available for me it's going to be a little bit more uh tricky to find when you're in the graduated filter and the radio filter as you'll see in a moment when i come back so for right now i'm in the adjustment brush and when we look here at the adjustment brush we can see that there are some brush settings in particular the size feather flow density auto mask which we've been using a ton of lately so what I'm going to do to make this easy is I'm going to set my feathering all the way down to zero just so that feathering is out of the way and I'm going to just set my brush size to a decent size something that you'll be able to see in this video. Now currently I have flow set to 100 and I have density set to 100. I'm going to play with density first. So density is really just a fancy way of saying uh, opacity or think of it as like a sheer piece of, of cloth um, or another word is strength, how strong it is. So if I were to move the density to about half, say 50%, that means that now whatever I brush, whatever adjustment I apply, it's going to be applied at 50% strength or 50% opacity. Now, I'm just so that you guys can see this, I, I've set my exposure to all the way. I've brought it up to four. So it's gonna be really obnoxious, but that's not the point here. So if I go over to the picture and I start to brush with density, no matter how many times I go back and forth, back and forth, that, that adjustment will always only be at 50% strength. So even though I've set the exposure to four in this example, it's really only being applied to half that strength. And no matter how many times I stop and start and keep going over that same spot, it will never get any brighter than this. Now, if we were to put density up to 100% strength and now back our flow down to 50%, we're gonna talk about flow. Flow is a little bit different. Flow, think of flow as like a can of spray paint. If you've ever spray painted anything in your life, furniture, a wall, a train, I'm not advising that you do anything like that, but just in case. You'll know that the way paint comes out of a spray can is it's a gradual thing. You kind of spray one coat, gets a little bit of paint, you spray over that same spot again, it builds, you spray again, it keeps building and building until whatever it is that you're painting is completely covered. That's what flow is gonna do. So if I set my flow to 50% and I have an exposure still at four, when I go over here and I start to paint, every time I go over, pass over it, you'll notice how it gradually gets brighter and brighter and brighter. Now at this point, because I have density set to 100, it's gonna keep building and building and building and building until I have reached a maximum exposure of four in that, in that situation because I've set density all the way up. Let's reset both of these options and let's think of it another way. If I were to set flow to 50% and density to 50% and I were to come over here, 
now every time I pass the flow will build and build and build but it will only build up unto the 50% density because that's one of the settings that I put in here. So they kind of work hand in hand and it's really up to you to decide how much of the effect do you want to apply and how fast do you want it to apply. Now, just for a general rule of thumb, I almost never mess with density. Just to make it easy on myself, I typically just set density to 100 because if I want my effect to be greater than or less than what I'm applying, I'm usually going to go over to the slider and make my adjustment there. So density to, for me in my mind doesn't really make sense, but flow does because I might not want my adjustment, even though it's aggressive, I might not want it to be painted on at 100% right away. I might actually prefer that I slowly, gradually, and more methodically and carefully paint my adjustment in. That way, if I decide that what I dialed in was too far, I can, I can at greater control uh, how fast that adjustment is being applied and then go over to my slider and, and manipulate it a little bit. So hopefully that makes some sense with respect to the difference between density and flow. If not, go ahead and leave us some comments down below and I'll think of some other examples um, or tutorials that I can do to expand on this topic just a little bit. But before I let you go, there's one more thing. I just wanna make sure that you guys know where density and flow is as it relates to the radial filter and the graduated filter. So if you don't know, stick around. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here to the graduated filter, and in order for this to work, you have to have a graduated filter applied. So I'm gonna go ahead and just apply something, and I'm gonna just reset this slider so that it's not anything crazy. And now that I've applied the graduated filter, now my brush feature is activated brush would not be activated if I didn't apply this graduated filter. That's why I said you have to put this here. So now that that's there, I can click on the brush feature and now I'll get the flow and density options down here. The same thing is true if I were to go up to the radial filter. If I click the radial filter, you'll notice how the brush option here is not available. So I have to apply a filter first and now the brush is available for the filter. And again, you'll see flow and density down here. So there is where you find it in those two spots. The adjustment brush, it's just in plain sight for you. And so hopefully this helped you make some decisions. It's basically in a nutshell, just a way to kind of control or better control uh, uh, how you're applying the adjustment to the photo so that way you're not just like slapping a bunch of paint on there You're actually doing it with a little bit more finesse and finesse is good especially in this kind of stuff and especially if you're painting on trains so anyways that's all I got for you guys today hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up subscribes are always welcome thank you to all the new followers here to the channel we appreciate you comments have been fantastic let's keep them going down below and I will see you in the next video have a great day everybody